again farmers I am Jim Bob welcome back to American Outback so uh, we are now scooping up our grass ready to dump for silage this sort of snail shell pattern here thanks to the way the field is, is uh, all this pasture is laid out we are going to go and uh, cut the uh, the grass by the sheep as well, so we can really uh, get a nice little starting allowance of grass to make some silage, uh, and then that'll be enough, I think, to get us started. It'll give us a decent amount of silage, enough to at least definitely get started with making uh, some TMR. The remaining grass that we have here, I'm going to uh, dump into the clamp. When we do the grass by the sheep pasture, uh, I'm actually going to be using that uh, with a baler. And uh, I'll get a wrapper in. Yeah, we'll probably just lease one uh, rather than buying one outright. But we'll wrap some silage bales because we're going to use um, silage bales to get our TMR started nice and quickly. So we'll have a small pile of hay bales, we'll have a small pile of silage bales. When we do our straw, we'll have a good supply of straw bales as well for both straw bedding and also for, uh, for feed. Actually, I'm wondering where we put the straw bedding on this map. Because there is no actual cow shed. So I wonder where the straw goes. That's an interesting question. Hmm. Where would the straw go? I may have to. Uh, I may have to Google that one. I may have to trawl the forums and try and find an answer. I mean, we've got plenty of time. You know, we're still uh, no closer to getting our crops done. Which reminds me, uh, what I need to do is speed time up. There we go. We need to get some growth going on those fields now so that uh, uh, so that those crops can start growing in. So we can apply the final stage of fertilization and move that a little bit closer to harvesting. This is episode four. Uh, we will have four more episodes after this one before Big Bud DLC drops. So we have four more episodes to make as much money as we can. And we will do that you know, uh, with the help of some off-screen contract work here and there as well. Uh, but also selling our soybean harvest. So over the next four episodes after this one you know, we will definitely be in a position to harvest our crop and then uh, take it to market and sell it all right there we go so we've got all of our grass so we're going to dump this in the clamp as well There we go, pretty even distribution there. I'm happy with that. So we are done with our loading wagon. We don't need that now. So we're going to put that back away. Okay. And 
what we are going to need is our bailing equipment. Beacons on as we rejoin the main road. Oh, I'm on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> uh, we Brits. So this is the meadow on coming up on our left that we're going to be working on. There it is. We're going to be getting our grass from there. And uh, we need to hire a bale wrapper as well. And then we're going to need to stack. And uh, we'll get our bale transporter out as well. Uh, to, uh, to load those up and bring them back to the farm. So where can we park our bailing gear? Uh, let's park it down here, out of the way. It's a bit tighter around here than I thought it was. Thought we'd have more room to turn around here. We can still just about make it, I think. Precision turning. All right, so attached. Let's head over to the store so we can go get our wrapper. Every time I go over this bridge, I can't help but look at the water. There we go. Gonna need to take some... Uh, some lovely picturesque shots of footage driving around the map at some point soon as a yeah, to use for the uh, the trailer in the intro to the series uh, what do we need wrapper 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 uh, look this is mods I don't want mods I want DLC there we go so let's uh, let's go with black and uh, let's lease $4,000 to lease. Yes. A little bit pricey than I was hoping it was going to be, but yeah, needs must. I don't want to buy one. I don't want to own one of these outright, at least not at this stage. Going forward, maybe, yes, we will need one, but at this stage, no. to be careful when you approach this little uh, section coming up because if you turn here you can see there's a car pulling out there look cars do come up that side road there so it's always best to avoid that one and turn down this one like that that way you don't come around the corner and suddenly get yourself into a head-on crash with the AI 
Just a little tip for you there if you weren't aware of that already. Okay, so we don't need this just yet, so we're going to park just here, just off to the side. Let's get our other tractor, our Optum. And this is the one that we do need, so let's go hit the cat, hit the uh, hit the sheep up. Here are chickens clucking away in the background there. Nice square area there for us to work with. It's going to make uh, bailing very, very straightforward and simple. to actually leave that just there. I want to get all the uh, border cut and then go up and down with the rows before I start doing the windrowing itself. Uh, oh, can't turn that on yet because I haven't unfolded the front mower. There we go. A good way to check if you're going in a straight line when you're doing something like this is to check the and keep an eye on the thickness of the rows that you leave behind you. If one starts getting thinner than the other, <coughs> it means you've probably started to drift ever so slightly. There we go, and we'll turn just here. So you can see there we drifted, now we're drifting back the other way. Oh, got the indicators on, let's turn those off. And that's a good place to turn, so we stay away from those trees and also kind of line up with the front gate there as well. Trying not to leave little strips of grass in between, but you know, this hasn't been a perfect cut, unfortunately. And bear with me because I do need to cough again off camera. frog in my throat for the last hour or so. Haven't been able to clear it very well. I wonder where that uh, expression comes from. Frog in your throat. Maybe it's just, you know, an extension of uh, sounding croaky. No pun intended there, generally curious if that is the reason where that that saying has come from you've got a frog in your throat because you sound all croaky I suppose I could do another headland here actually just to make turning a bit quicker and easier there we go 
so I'm making noises again that it shouldn't be making. As I said, I am going to uh, have to uh, do the drive transplant this weekend. See if it is the uh, the hard drive that's causing the issues. I kind of hope it is, because if it is, I know it's an easy and relatively straightforward fix that's not going to cost me an arm and a leg. You know, I can uninstall... Well, I can just you know, swap the hard drives over, install just what I need to install. Uh, but going forward, just downgrading from 2 terabytes to 500 gig is not a good long-term strategy. Especially considering the number of games I have and the fact that I am recording footage. I will eat up hundreds of hours of footage very quickly. Or hundreds, hundreds of gigs of, uh, of space with footage very, very quickly. which means no room for games and if I have you know, put all my games on well I can't put all my games on but if I put a good number of games on then uh, I can't have any space for recording so yeah, it becomes a question of then whether I go for a uh, just a straight drive transplant put a new hard drive in the system or whether I actually go for a USB attached standalone hard drive kind of leaning towards a straight re uh, straight replacement drive if the drive is default just buy a new a new uh, a new hard disk swap those over with the uh, internet that I have being particularly poor it'll take me an eternity to re-download all of my digital stuff but uh, yeah, it won't cost me anything apart from time made the right choice to just do the mowing and rowing separately I think it's just going to smooth out this operation I have toyed with the idea of actually ploughing this stretch here turning it into a workable grass field that we can increase the yield uh, I, I don't really want to do it on this map just simply because I've seen you know I've seen what it looks like when you have grass planted on the field and it, it it does look a bit weird. But maybe we'll use grass as a rotational crop on some of our fields. The great thing about having a grass field is that once you mow it, it removes the need to plough it. So you can then just plant a new crop over the top. And uh, you've got a freshly ploughed field effectively. So we may use we may use grass as a uh, as a replacement for ploughing on some of the larger fields. Just do a round of mowing and then take the uh, take the grass to the biogas plant. So I've just finished watching uh, a new series on Netflix. Well, I say new, I'm not sure how long it's been up, uh, but uh, it's new to me. Uh, I'd never even heard of it. And then uh, just saw one of my friends on Facebook make, making a comment about, uh, about the show. So I uh, you know, went on my search bar, typed it in, watched it, and... Uh, and I got hooked instantly, couldn't put it down, you know, 
I watched almost the entire season in a single sitting last night and then today I finished it off and uh, whew, it is powerful stuff it's 13 reasons why if you don't know what 13 reasons why is uh, I don't want to really spoil it for you uh, or give too much away uh, but essentially 13 Reasons Why is the story of uh, a girl in high school who commits suicide and then kind of speaks to everybody from beyond the grave. She's left a series of uh, recordings on, uh, on old school audio cassettes explaining why she did what she did and why she felt that was the only, w uh, the only way she could go and it is seriously, seriously powerful stuff you know, really compelling if you haven't already watched it I do strongly, strongly urge you to actually go out there and watch this show you know, it is amazingly powerful stuff you really do feel you know, incredibly, you know I'm trying to think of the right word to describe it here, but you really do feel as though you've uh, just sort of witnessed something pretty epic. And uh, even someone like me who really struggles <laughs> with emotion in terms of just feeling emotion and dealing with emotion, you know, as a result of you know my depression and my uh, my autism. It really, especially towards the very end, it really struck a, a real chord with me and it you know, made me feel something very powerful. So, uh, you know, it's definitely worth watching. And uh, the comment that I saw, which maybe actually, you know, look the, sh look the show up in the first place, was I think this should be required viewing in schools. And I have to say, I think it's right. You know, I think it is something that uh, that should be shown to that age group. I really do. It's uh, turn the engine off. It's something that can really be of benefit. I think not just as something that's entertaining to watch, um, but I think the lessons that the show tries to impart and teach as well. I think are lessons that need to be learned and uh, and wisdom that needs to be shared uh, among that sort of age range I really do think you know it is something that you know uh, that should be seen by people of that of, you, know, you know who are in school I really do um, if you're a parent and you have kids around you know that age you know and you're unsure about them seeing it watch it first and uh, and see what you think and then sit down and watch it with them a second time I really think that should be seen by as many people of that age as possible and that's all I'll say about it you know I won't raise that one again but uh, yeah do please watch it if you haven't you know incredibly powerful stuff On a uh, <laughs> on a slightly uh, lighter topic, um, I have also been trying to keep abreast with Designated Survivor. You know, new episodes go live every Thursday, and you know, every, you know, every now and again, you know, I'll mention on one of my videos, you know, how frustrating it can be to sit and watch old school style where you know you have to wait an entire week for the next episode before you can watch the next one uh, I'm so used to binge watching now that I find it you know awkward and difficult to uh, to wait an entire week just to see something we've become an impatient people you know we like to have stuff on demand and and when you uh, are so used to have having everything at your fingertips you know having to wait for something like that it, it can be a very, very frustrating experience, but it is what it is. 
but um, season two of Better Call Saul has now gone live on Netflix as well and they're doing the same thing with that as well that's now being released on a week by week basis <laughs> they hit me on the two shows that I'm watching at the moment you know um, they've hit me on both of them We're about halfway through, just over, just under 20 minutes or so left on the video, or on this episode. That'll be time to uh, to bale all of this grass. Uh, may not be time to wrap it all, um, but what I'll probably do is I'll probably wrap off camera, if that's the case, and then next episode. We'll load up onto the bale trailer. You'll be able to see the new uh, Black Sheep modded bale trailer in use. And we'll take them back over to our farm. We need to figure out where we're going to store the bales as well, actually. Still haven't thought about that. I think one of the uh, the small side sheds that I'm using, maybe probably where the uh, fertilising equipment is, I think I might turn that into my, uh, my bale storage shed. which means we'll, we need to relocate where our fertilising equipment lives. We have plenty of storage within the farm itself for, uh, for machinery and, and vehicles and stuff. So that won't be a problem, finding a new home for that equipment. I think our fields should be ready for their final uh, uh, application of fertilizer. So we'll check that in just a second. There we go. Fold the uh, the rower up. Our work here is done. We can take this uh, this tractor back to the farm. And we'll do so by uh, just swinging past our other fields. So I'll take a little bit of a detour on the way back, just so we can check on field 1 and field 20. See if we have growth on those fields. We should have by now, I think. Field 1, I would imagine, should also be ready. Uh, field t uh, 19, the field that we are working on for the other farmer, uh, that may be a little bit of a different story. Because there has been you know, a, a difference of hours b between uh, planting. But yep, you can see we have crops growing there. Field, nine, uh, field 1 has crops. Does Field 19? Field 19 has crops as well. Beautiful. Which means field one, uh, field two will definitely have crops growing as well. <coughs> so we can break out our weeder. We can send him off to work on uh, on these fields, and uh, we can get that going while the baling is going on. So we can kill two jobs with one stone. about going to bed at some point soon we're up to about half five in the morning now I mean I'm pretty nocturnal as it is so I'm usually up in the uh, in the early hours of the morning not usually up this late 
I'm usually sort of turning in by now. Uh, but as it is, I'm wide awake, I'm still recording, I'm still gaming. At this point, I'm usually just in a semi-vegetative state in bed, just staring at uh, stuff on YouTube on my tablet and falling asleep to that. But then I was up really late last night. You know, I didn't uh, didn't get to sleep till uh, gone nine o'clock this morning. Or yesterday morning, technically. So I've only been up since uh, I don't know, maybe five o'clock this evening or last night. Again, if you want to be really technical. Cows mooing away there. There is a clearance issue. Uh, I think height-wise, with some of our equipment on some of these sheds. But yeah, that to me there. If we just drive back to this shed here, this to me seems like the perfect place to store our bales. If we hop out, you know, we'll have three different types. We'll, we can have silage bales. We can have straw bales. We can have hay bales. Um, seems to be the perfect location. We're close to the sh uh, to the cows there. They're going to need those bales. You know, it saves messing about with any of these larger sheds that we could actually use for equipment. It saves wasting those. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll uh, need to move all of our uh, spraying stuff and fertilizing stuff. That's no biggie. It's an easy enough job to do. There we go, all lined up, so we'll get the worker underway. Make sure that he is actually all the way up to the edge of the field. Yes, he is, good. So, let's uh, start bailing. So we'll leave that just there because we don't need that just yet. We'll leave the auto stacker just there as well because we don't need to auto stack. We need to rack first and then stack the bales afterwards. So unfold the baler, lower the pickup, turn it on and away we go. see how slow it is to actually build these bales. We're going to be halfway around the field before we get our first one sticking out that, you know, dropped on the ground at this rate. So we've just finished making our first bale. Now we're going to wait for this, the second one to push that one out. So the second one's now done. <coughs> can we get around this corner first? Yes, we can. There we go. We're losing patches. don't want to leave loose grass lying around on this field really it just looks because it's so dark it just looks weird plus it could be a while before we come back to these fields anyway so I just don't want it to be there as a constant reminder that I was lazy I couldn't be bothered to do the job properly we don't have a case baler that would just really be the icing on the cake I think for this map you know we have plenty of uh, 
great equipment, but it's a shame that we have to have you know something branded with Massey Ferguson on a case farm. You know, we don't have anything case that we can actually use. It's not the end of the world, but you know, if I end up uh, deciding to go with Challenger, you know, because I have toyed with the idea of bringing a Challenger or two onto this farm, then we'll probably because uh, we can't rebrand. You know, they are completely separate. You know, the branding isn't something we can change. You have to buy the one that you want that stays branded. The only thing we can change is adding the back attacher. If we do do that, then we'll sell this baler. We'll replace it with a Challenger baler, and then we'll respray our stacker to match the uh, the new baler. As you can see, not that many bales. We have enough to get us started with silage. The ratio we're going to do because we'll have you know uh, plenty of well. You see, I was going to do one silage bale, two hay bales, and then. Uh, one straw bale will be our ratio. I may mix that up just a little bit. May go two silage. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Just sat there staring over the wheel. I've always thought it looked quite funny the way they just avatars always just sit there with their arms so rigid on the wheels. Looks like it would be incredibly uncomfortable to drive like that for hours on end. out at those angles <laughs> that just looks like that would get really uncomfortable really quickly holding your arms in that set position constantly but I've never driven a tractor so who am I to know if you've driven a tractor you know let me know how uncomfortable would it be to drive with your arms held at that angle you know, just constantly. Not resting them on anything, you know, not having them leaning on your lap, you know, just hold them out at that angle, suspending in midair like that for hours on end. That must be horrendously <laughs> uncomfortable. Oop. Getting a little bit wonky here because I'm zoomed in. There we go, that's the right button. Kind of zoom out. <coughs> it's the great thing about having these smaller, narrower windrows is that you can be a little bit more uh, zigzaggy on the field and still get everything. bells which you're going to end up with I haven't been counting got a decent a decent number looking at it oops I just missed a couple of spots there just go and grab those That's all of them. Ah, oh, we got one here as well. I thought I was going to get and forgot. And there we go. 
Alright, so let's turn the baler off. And we'll eject that bale. There we go. Fold up. Raise the pickup. And now we'll park the baler out of the way. There we go. Let's grab our wrapper. I do love watching these things in action. Even if that creaky sound effect at the end where it cuts through the wrap does sound a bit weird. straighten this one up enough. Oh, I've over I over straightened. There you go. Well, that's another bell wrapped, and it's about time for me to wrap up this episode. Yes, I know, really bad pun, but <laughs> hey, you can't blame a guy. You can't can't blame a guy for uh, cracking a bad joke every now and again. So we will wrap up this episode here. Thank you all for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave a uh, a thumbs up if you've enjoyed what you've seen. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel to. Uh, you know, get your notifications through of when the new videos are released. You can also follow me on Facebook at Jim Bob Plays Games on Facebook. Oops, I just jumped out my tractor there. That's what I meant to do. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all again very soon.